Let's have a look at the latest assembly pictures of the Lickenhaus 007 hypercar today. The engine was running now for the first time and there are quite some interesting features to talk about. If we have a closer look at the back of the car, we can see the additional radiators in the center that I predicted in my last video. There are two of them and it looks like the deeper rearward one is an oil radiator because of its connectors. The forward one will run at a lower temperature and both radiators will be fed by the additional roof scoop as described earlier. Also, we can see the alternator mounted at the left hand side of the gearbox. Podium, the Italian company which designed and assembles the car, stated that reliability and access for eventual repair jobs was the top priority for the design. We can also see the rear pushrod suspension and the rocker setup. The linear potentiometer is attached to the coilover measures the damper travel while driving. As described before, the Pipo engine and the extra gearbox are connected with a large casted bell housing, which also provides the forward pickup points for the rear suspension. As we can see in the picture, these forward points can be adjusted to control the anti-lift at the rear axle. That will be important to keep the diffuser working properly under braking, and if you already cast such a big part, why not give you the flexibility of adjusting these points? In my previous video, we could see the air-to-air -air intercoolers lying in the shelf. Now they are mounted at the car in the predicted position. But it looks like they use the whole rearward air intake and no air will be channeled towards the back of the upper side of the diffuser. Blickenhaus said aerodynamic performance was not the top priority because the cars will be BOP'd anyway and the regulations set an aerodynamic efficiency. The intercoolers are interesting because they use an U-flow concept instead of an I-flow. That means that in and outlet are on the same side and charged air will flow through the radiator net twice. Advantage is that you don't have to deal with one connector being outboard and easy to be damaged once you hit something with the side of the car. Disadvantage is that the internal resistance is higher due to the reduced flow area. Also, the heat dissipation is a bit lower than in an iFlow radiator because the flow which re-enters the radiator net is already cooled down a bit, so the temperature difference is lower and hence cooling performance reduced. But that's just a small detail and like I said, reliability was the main focus here. The picture also reveals the side pod shape already and it will be interesting to see more of the bodywork coming together. This picture shows quite impressively the stable suspension of the side air duct that the intercooler mounts to. Also, we can see the intercooler inlet, outlet and map sensor. You can find temperature stickers all over the engine bay to monitor the maximum temperatures the parts experience. So it's really nice to see the car coming together and the engine already runs and the gearbox shifts. Can't wait to see more. What about you? Let me know in the comments below.